Welcome to the Training Two Wheels podcast. We talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Rubluck, and you all know my co host, Justin. I am running out of space for space on my arm. Bird and Uncle, did you really just say that, Ken? This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related. Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are providing tips on how to plan a proper group ride. But just the tips. Just the tips? Just the tips. <laughs> Don't expect to get the whole shaft and balls of the group rides. Boop. <laughs> All right. You got to watch the YouTube video to understand that boop. So (laughs) starting this episode, right, (laughs) right off the hinge. (laughs) What's going on guys? Oh man. So another day. So people who watch the YouTube version of our podcast, they'll notice that we're all wearing the same costumes here. And team Bradley is also joining us still because we record two episodes um, every other week, so ah, I did a wardrobe change. We just gave away, gave away our secrets. I, I turned my hat backwards. Oh, did you? Ah, yeah. Good oh, one. geez. Good one. Look at you. All right, so let's let's talk about group rides. You know, we all know group rides can be a ton of fun. Great way to kind of meet other local riders, uh, share riding experiences with your friends, or in Justin's case, his fans, because he does his big group rides what monthly, right? Uh, mm. I try to do it monthly, okay. bi-monthly at least. Okay. And the other side of group rides, it takes a lot of planning and coordination to make so sure. So much planning. It, just to make sure it goes <laughs> off without yeah. a hitch. Which, now, speaking of, we have our largest group ride ever coming up for the uh, Texas Roundup. Yeah, you want to go into that? Is it October 5th? Yes. So October 5th is the event. So October 4th. 4th will be the ride. Is the Texas Roundup where we are taking uh, pretty much everyone who wants to attend the Bring It Home ride up in Oklahoma, which in case you don't know what that is, we are attempting to break the world record for the most Harleys in a continuous parade. So October 4th, we are leaving from uh, Cowboys, Alamo City, Harley-Davidson. Uh, we don't have the exact time yet. That's We'll, we'll get into that here in a second. But uh, we are pretty much hitting every Harley dealership minus, I think, one or two from mm-hmm. San Antonio all the way up to uh, Paris, Texas, or Choctaw, Oklahoma, if you want to go all the way up there. Or Choctaw Casino, right? Choctaw Casino yeah. Yeah. in, in Grant, Oklahoma. Grant, Oklahoma. Um, if you want details on that, you can go to bikeandbird.com and click on the tab that says event slash rides. And I have a link for the, um, the route or the event uh, itinerary so you can see what stop is closest to you and about what time we will be there. Cool. Very nice. So when we're looking at building a group ride, because that's what we're really doing. Yeah. You know, you're, you have to build all the different aspects that go into a group ride. And people who just show up and enjoy the ride, they don't necessarily know what's what has gone into it. So yeah. let's, let's start talking about that. Some of the things to um, think about and consider whenever you're looking at building your own group ride. So Justin, you want to start us off with uh, size. So size does play, size does matter. <laughs> size does was, matter. If you didn't oh, say it, I was going to say I, I it. I tossed it up for y'all. Oh, I man. tossed it up. Thank you. <laughs> I got it on the bounce. Uh, so one big aspect of a group ride is how many riders are you expecting? Um, pretty much how we break it down is a small group is about five or less. Medium is about 10 or less. And a large is anything over 10. Once you get over 10, things pretty much 10 to 100 you're pretty much expecting the same thing yeah 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 which is weird because when you think about you think oh 10 people we're gonna go from point a to point b man it's like herding cats but (laughs) you know just 10 people on bikes and that's 10 people that all have you know think about if you're going to ride yourself you're thinking about you know food gas did you drop something did you forget to buckle your helmet there's so many things that can derail a group ride with 10 individuals yeah yep yeah all right so then size of the group matters but there's something else that a lot of people don't consider or they should be considering which is the skill level of the riders now the tough part about this is one you have no clue who's going to show up two when you're talking to folks 
they're not going to tell you the truth nine times out of ten no. yeah. about their skill level because one, they either think in their mind they're a lot more skilled than they are, or two, they don't want to look like a chump. Yeah. yeah, I've been on, I've I've hosted and I've been to a lot of group rides where people think that they're great riders and then they get around great riders and they're like, holy fuck, like. Yeah. Or they actually, they're riding technical roads. Yeah. You know, they're not riding block to block in the city. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're not bar hopping anymore. Yeah. It, it's so funny. I went on one of those rides with uh, Connor FXDB and <laughs> me and uh, Cody Melton started just fucking dusting everybody, which is funny because Cody still rides a 72 Sportster. And I see they want that fugly ass Sportster. I don't think it's ugly. I think it's pretty dope. The gold one. Yeah. 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 That one. Well, uh, yeah, me and him were just toasting the group. We did the the grinder, and once we got through the grinder, we were stopped for a good three or four minutes before the rest of the group caught up. I did that on one of his rides. Oh, and yeah. These were a bunch of Dyna Bros. Yeah, yeah, we, we we did that on one of the rides with Connor. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was on the, the Castroville, and yeah. then we took thirty seven back and yeah. and busted them pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I was on the Street Glide, and I had I pulled in front of all of them, and. Yep. That was bad because you but guys were hearing me scraping the, the oh, 90 yeah. degree oh, yeah. turns. And I was but like, <laughs> the, the good thing about that, though, is I've spoken with a couple of those guys that were on that ride and they were able to recognize the the skill level and mm-hmm. appreciate it. Like yeah. I've gotten compliments from multiple people in that group that said, like, yeah, a lot of Dino Bros talk shit, but you're one of the very few that I know that can back it up. So. Oh, yeah. That's good for the ego. Well, oh, dude. My head was gigantic. Like Instagram bros. Instagram dino bros, man. Oh, They're for all sure. The place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you want to ideally keep your less experienced riders or your less technical riders up front because – they're going to help you set the pace and you, yes. you don't want to have a bunch of rubber banding going on. And for those who don't understand that term, that's where your group starts to kind of stretch out and then collapse back in, stretch out and collapse back in yeah, like an accordion. Yeah. yeah. You want to try and keep your pace set to where everyone's comfortable. Everyone's riding their own ride and doing and people look at this differently. They say, I'll put all the newbies in the back. No. That's the worst place to put them. Because one, they're only seeing the bikes that's right in front of them. They're not right next to the leader. They're not going to necessarily see the hand signals, turn signals, whatever that's happening up ahead because they could be bikes 10, 11, 12, and 13. So, oh, and there could be a huge gap there yeah. even. Yeah. yeah. So from skill level, let's talk about route and... This one's going to be controversial, I think, just because people want to do it differently. Uh, So plan a route with a purpose. You know, scenery, if you just plan on doing a scenic route, cool. That's what it is. If you want to go for highly technical, go that way. Or if you're going destination. So all three of these, and these are very broad categories, but all three of these bring with them different aspects to your route planning. Yep. So I'll start off with the scenic route. So if if that's what you're planning, best for it to not be super technical because people are going to be looking around, looking at the scenery. That's what it's for. It only takes two seconds to get your ass off the road. (laughs) Shit, not even. (laughs) Well, Donnie. Yeah. I don't think he was looking at scenery. I think he was... He was looking at my... I think he was looking at your ass. Yeah, yeah he was He was showing <laughs> off. Um, Trying so, to show off. Yeah. <laughs> um, super technical route. Well, actually, go back. Um, when you're doing a scenic route, plan for places to pull over, get the photo ops for the Instagram bros, and just to be able to take a break because rider fatigue sets in. Oh, yeah. And if you're not ready and just pumped to hit the the twisties i know that's going to piss shade tree off by saying that but (laughs) if you're shredding the twisties you're amped up so fatigue's not going to hit as quickly but if you're just doing kind of a more lazy route that fatigue's going to start setting in a lot faster so planning those stops so people can take in the scenery get the photos and all that is important um technical route um be sure to let everyone know ahead of time that it is going to be a technical route so that they can one gauge their ability to ride those roads and two be prepared to actually ride hard yeah 
because I know for us, when we hit the Twisted Sisters or anything like that, we are riding those roads hard, and we know them. I was going to say, we've ridden them multiple times now. Yeah, so for us, yeah. we're okay with it. But you get these guys who are 70 years old who just got their road glide, and it still has paper plates, and this is the first bike they've ever owned. Or, tw- or 23. Or 21 years old, yeah. Just got their have. Vaquero or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Uh, can you want to go into the destination route? So if obviously everything's going to have a destination, but a lot of places you might, like for us, when we went to Arkansas, mm-hmm. that was our destination. So obviously you want to choose the most enjoyable route for the ride. You can have scenery in there. If it's along the route, that might be something you're interested in. Mm-hmm. But it's best when you're looking at this, if you're looking at, 300 plus miles just jump on the highway yeah. yep interstate state highways yeah the, the the fastest route uh you'll you'll limit your your fatigue mm-hmm. uh you'll have better places to stop better places to rest uh i learned this on our first bring it home ride because we took 281 on the way up and we regretted it because it I never realized how much it's so fucking annoying slowing down to 45 and then oh. back up to 70 and then down to 45 and then back up to 70 every single fucking small town you went through. Oh, yeah. Every, what, like 30 miles yep. or so? Yeah. It's constant. But, you know, for some people, you know, that may be the route they want to take for their destination to avoid having to go 35. through Austin <laughs> yeah. on 35. Yeah. Austin and Waco, skipping those as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. So, yeah. So, if, for, your, for your destination trips, definitely look at the length how fast you want to get there, how long your overall trip is going to take to get there regardless. Mm -hmm. Uh, And obviously fatigue is going to be an issue with those rides. Yeah. So planning stops every hundred miles or so for fuel, but to get off the bike, stretch, get the blood pumping to all of your extremities again and to get your head out of the road. Oh yeah. That's important. Um, Plan the route with stops for fuel according to the bikes that have smaller tanks. Yep. So Worst if, case scenario. Yeah. If you already know that one of your buddies has the small tank, let's let's say Brad. I did Brad, yeah. And <laughs> no matter what he rides, it's always the smallest tank. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Brad looked like he's about to say something, but I think he's just stopped. But uh but yeah, Sportsters, Dynas, they're not going to have sport bikes. Sport, sport bikes, bikes too. Yep. Yep. Um, they're not going to have the six gallon tanks. So pulling over every 75 to 100 miles. Someone shows up on a Grom. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Even those can get like 100 to 20. <laughs> um, so 75 to 100 miles is going to be what you're going to want to do. Just kind of use that as the rule of thumb uh, for this. Um, checking construction on the route either on the internet or with a dry run now also road closures yeah yeah (laughs) we learned that one on the way to arkansas bridges that are now missing yeah (laughs) or 10 feet underwater yeah (laughs) um and this this kind of brings up to my next point which we'll get to right after here from nutsack nutsack is the only edc bag the crew carries and for good reason they're crazy and awesome they get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in america with american waxed canvas american leather and american labor we want you to join us in the two-week challenge buy a bag from them use it for two weeks and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear they will give you a full refund we absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today we are back so we're going to continue on our route planning for um, a group ride and we talked about checking construction or road closures or what have you one thing that you should always do and we'll be honest about it we do not do this do it (laughs) at all um but we typically ride the same roads every time yeah 
Um, but you should always pre-ride your route. And this is if it's not a destination route, because obviously you don't want to do a 300 plus tr you know mile trip just to test ride it, which actually is what's going to be happening maybe next week. So the week of 4th of July, Tracy and I are going to probably pre-ride the route to Dallas uh, for the bring it home. And here's the here's the key you want to look for. You want to ride it the same day of the week and roughly the same time period because you want to get that feel for what traffic, traffic feels like. If there's construction during certain times of the day, when does that happen? But also you want to find where are your choke points. So whenever we're riding on state highways, you'll get that, you know, passing lane. You want to understand, okay, is this a... 3,000 feet passing oh, yeah. lane or is this a 200 feet? feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so God, I fucking hate those things. So stupid. So that that is huge. And if you're doing just a technical route, pre-ride it. And we will be talking about this in a little bit, which is going to be road captains. When I say a little bit, it's actually the next topic. Um, if you are going to be on a medium to a large group ride, you need road captains. Yep. Um, so, Justin, take us through some of the reasons for having a road captain. So the, the main reason that you want to have the road captain is you want to have at least two people, preferably three, that know the route and have some sort of means of communication with the head rider. So the main purpose of road captains is to take lead of the group if and when a split up occurs, mm -hmm. whether that be the two last people or everyone behind rider number three i mean we've we've all had it happen yeah um other uses are for uh, massaging traffic so like if we need a lane blocked off or if we need an entrance ramp or an exit ramp blocked off that really helps like that's why i love having roadblock as my tail gunner <laughs> is because he blocks the fucking road well no i don't block because that's illegal i massage oh, traffic okay. well <laughs> you give me a happy ending to the ride so that's also <laughs> illegal. But uh, if he says that lane is good, that lane's yours, I know for a fact that lane is ours. Uh, but if you do have road captains, uh, they should be on the pre-ride because yeah. they need to know where those choke points are or at least have them somewhat in the knowledge. For example, when I was planning the uh, Texas Roundup, I used Google Maps to, to see how many lanes we have to block off when we leave. Uh, where are Where are the possibilities of us to get split up split and try up, to minimize yep. those as, as much as possible. Yeah. So I put in the notes of, of my itinerary, which we'll get to here in a second, of what exit we need to leave out of as far as like the gas station. Do we take the north, east, southwest, second from the last? What lanes need to be blocked off, if, if any? Mm -hmm. And if we're going through stoplights, how many, how many bikes we need at each stoplight to block as well? Yeah. So to that point... Your road captains should be folks that you ride with a lot. Yeah. You want to know their riding style and have a confidence. Like what Justin was saying with him and I, when we ride together, he knows when I block a lane, it's his. Well, that it's actually blocked. Yeah. Because how many times have we had people who went to block a road, quote unquote, Yeah. yeah. and they, they just... Fucking 18-wheeler blows by yeah, yeah there's nothing going on there they're just kind of stuck in the middle of traffic look like an idiot yeah yeah um and then it, it also helps because i know justin's riding style so i can predict when he's going to want a lane or i know because of how he rides when i get onto a highway and i'm massaging traffic i massage it to where he's already starting to come in and then i take another lane to give him that extra room yeah. so just understanding your road captains and it's, it's going to be your buddies the people you ride the most with um and this is something that we learned when trace and i was going through road captain school for hog uh, the dallas chapter that we were part of they required a six month mentorship or internship if you will to get everything down because every of uh, all the other road captains had to ride with you understand your riding style and learn to have confidence in your call outs which makes sense it makes yeah. total sense yeah so so three road captains and 
everyone who is in charge of the ride is a road captain. So you have the leader, you have the tail gunner. Those are those should always be your two road captains. Minimum. Having a sweeper, someone who can take charge, so become the leader of a split group is key. Yeah. Because one, you don't want a bunch of folks who have no clue where they're going trying to catch, catch up. Catch up. Oh my God. Let let everyone know a road captain will come up, take the lead, and will do their best to get everyone back up to the group yep. safely. And that's that's what this is really all about, is safety. Oh, yeah. Because um, we've had those rides where, you know, 40 people were there, and it was like, holy fuck. Yep. Yeah. It's a shit show. Um, comms. You know, Justin, you, you touched on it, but communications is key. Uh, I know, again, back when I was in the Hog chapter, we always ran CBs. And they were a lot more reliable than, say, a Senna. And no. <laughs> but we folks who were on the touring bikes kind of figured out what channels we would be on so we would mix it up so that it was just us we didn't want people who were not road captains to hear what we're saying because typically your rear road captain is actually the person leading the ride because he's calling out things okay biker number six is uncomfortable on what he's doing pull him out something to that effect you're always communicating with your lead but the the rear road captains his the one blocking the lane he's typically the one that has the gps going and can tell you okay you're gonna have a left turn in you know 500 feet yeah, yeah. i know all well, of the rides that i've led for justin's group ride i had no clue what the route was i my job was setting pace and making sure that everyone was in line when justin when and you guys were the calling out okay you're turning in half a mile or you're turning at this road yeah, and you don't want everyone listening in no or being able to talk because then they preemptively do that stuff ruins the whole point of it yeah yeah or they start you know choking down the comms channel and you won't be able to get that important yeah. call out so yeah. so um, one one important piece about the comms is having everyone on the same page and that's that's why I make my ride itineraries. I actually have a video coming out uh, Tuesday. If you're listening to this the day it comes out, the following Tuesday is when uh, I'm dropping this uh, this video. And it pretty much walks you through how to make a ride itinerary to keep either all your road captains, or if you've got a smaller group of, of close buddies, you can keep the entire group on the same page. Uh, so for example, we have location, which is, I, I, I usually just abbreviate the locations because it's, mm -hmm. it's usually things like a Harley dealership or uh, a major gas station. And then what I also include is the address. Now, the reason I include the address is because I will make a route on Google Maps, but for instance, when we had our Arkansas debacle, mm -hmm. sometimes, depending on what OS you're using on your phone, might not accept that link or you might have issues opening up the app. So I include the address, you can copy and paste it right in there. Yep. For I'm, I'm using my uh, Texas Roundup sheet as an example. So since we have to be there at a certain time, I pretty much started my time of where, when I wanted to be at our destination and worked backwards from there. Mm -hmm. And that will give you an idea of what time you need to leave and the allotted time for each stop. So I've got arrival, arrival time, departure time, and then I've also made it simple is time at stop and then time to next stop in minutes. So I used Google Maps and you're able to set your departure time. That mm -hmm. way it accounts for traffic. I highly recommend doing that because if you're sitting there trying to plan out your route on a Saturday at six o'clock and you're taking off Monday morning eight, you're gonna a have totally, totally different, different traffic patterns. A whole different world. Uh, I also put distance to next stop. That way people know if they need to um, get gas. I also put miles to next <laughs> gas because we're not gonna be stopping at a gas station every single time <laughs> for this particular uh, route. And then I also put the type and notes. So type is just, uh, is it a food stop? Is it a gas stop? Is it multiple? Uh, is it just a dealer stop? And then for the notes, for example, I was talking about these earlier. Uh, it says X on a frontage road, two lights, no turnaround, will need blocked. Uh, next stop is Waco HD. If you need gas, get it at the attached Flying J across through Denny's parking lot. No lights to block when exiting. 
So I know, not only do I know what I'm doing when I'm leaving that stop, I also know what I need to do when I get to the next stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also walk you through in my video tutorial of how to set a route that is not the most direct route. So if you're planning for those scenic routes or things like that, and then you can send that route via the Google Maps link to the rest of the group. Or you can keep it on, what I like to do is keep it on Google Drive as a Google Sheet mm -hmm. and just share that link to the group. But if you don't want that, you can send it in the email, text message, yeah. whatever you want. <clears throat> yep. So speaking of stops, let's, let's move into stops. And a lot of folks don't, don't really consider like, oh, it's a gas station. We'll stop at a gas station. Eh. Now, like when we're run, running up to the Twisted Sisters, God, there's that one gas station we always fucking have to stop at, and I hate it. Yeah, yeah. it has like two pumps, and they're all just dog fucking slow. It takes thirty minutes to <sighs> fill up six gallons worth of gas. Um, so choose stops that can one accommodate the size of the group. So luckily here in, in Texas, we have Bucky's. Yeah, Jeez. Bucky's. So, There's always an open pump at Bucky's. Yeah, when they have 200 gas pumps, you're set. Uh, awesome. But also, the parking lot size, depending yeah. on how big oh, your group yeah. is. If you have 100 bikes, you're you're not stopping at a you know mom and pop. You're not stopping at a regular 7-Eleven. No. Yeah. You're not stopping at any normal gas station. You have to go to a truck, truck stop. stop. You're going to have to go to a truck stop, yeah. Um, and then spacing out the stops, again, rule of thumb, 75 to 100 miles for fuel and to aid in rider fatigue. Yep. That is huge because as the day wears on, especially if you're doing a ride in the summertime, the heat is going to sap your energy and all the riders are going to feel it. Especially like us, we wear you know long sleeves or jackets riding jackets chaps full yeah. face helmets yeah it's it's going to hit you harder and faster so making sure that everyone understands the conditions and what to expect at the gas stations or the stops even let's talk restaurants yeah if you have a lunch planned and you have a hundred bikes can their parking lot handle a hundred bikes i can't think of a single restaurant off the top of my head that can handle that not easily no you gotta have to be like a. Um, so there's these restaurants called Skillet, mm -hmm. but they're attached to a truck stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just considering these things, and if you already know you're going to have a massive group, you need to call that restaurant ahead of time and let them know hey, we're coming in with 100 bikes, probably 140, 150 people. Yep. Because you're going to have two up uh, riders. Yep. So things to consider. Um, let's talk safety. And this is a big one. Safety third. Safety third. Yep. I agree. <laughs> Behind yeah. safety first and safety second. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so safety. Now, on our rides, we tell everyone, ride your own ride. God, yeah. And people don't understand that, though. Yeah. Rarely people actually do it. Now, we, we plan rides to where we're on a road, and then we come up to an intersection and we stop because we have Hasso. <laughs> who yeah. facts and, and Tracy? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, they ride their rides. Oh absolutely. yeah, absolutely. And I have no issues with that. And we know that we can expect on the Twisted Sisters, we're gonna have to wait for five minutes or yep. so for Hosser to catch up. That's fine because we already know it. Yep. Yeah, we know that he's not fucking around. Yeah, he's he's riding his ride, enjoying the scenery, and that's fine. He's a skilled enough rider to do what he wants to do. But really hit home that point with everyone in your group. You're not going to leave them. No, no. We're, 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 yeah, we're not going to leave you behind. If we do get ahead, yeah, yeah. we're going to slow down. If, if we need to slow down, we'll slow down. Or if we need to stop, we'll stop. Yeah. We've done it every single time. Yep. And, and people, so people many just people don't, don't get it. still try to ride outside of their abilities. Yep. Oh, I'm yeah. not saying we're the best fucking riders on earth far from it but we know the routes we know the roads and we ride hard we ride harder than other riders we ride harder than a lot of other harley riders right that's fair to say yeah so for that again just hit it home make people understand they're not going to be left behind ride their own ride and no one's going to shun them for yeah. it i always tell people i will not take a turn until we have the entire group. Yeah. yeah. So 
I will I will wait there for thirty minutes and I don't care. Yeah, I or will we'll send someone to look for you. Yeah, exactly. I I will not make a turn unless either I or a road captain is waiting there at the turn for you guys. Yeah, simple as that. Um, with this with safety, not everyone knows hand signals. Yeah, no. I learned that one on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I totally didn't and, go over the hand signals on the last one. And well, and not everyone is comfortable giving hand signals. Right. And that's fine. That is totally fine if you have proper riding uh spacing. Yeah. yeah. If everyone's in a staggered formation, they can see it. They can see all the other people who are comfortable giving hand signals. Yep. See the blinkers. Giving, yeah. Yep. Um but go over hand signals before every like if you like on this bring it home uh, the texas roundup every stop we make we're probably going to be picking up more riders we need to go through the hand signals every time we pick up more riders <laughs> left right stop yeah those are the basic single ones. file yeah and staggered formation um and then the big one and i i don't understand why people do this but say someone falls out of the group fill in from the rear do not start crossing tracks. Yeah. Just pull ahead. Well, see, I've talked to some people, and they don't feel comfortable passing that other person in the same lane. Yeah. I, I've, I've been on, I've been on hmm. different group rides, and that's one of the areas where I get a, a varying response is some people will say crisscross. Some people will say right up ahead. Yeah. From MSF, you pull ahead. And in hog, you know, they say pull straight ahead. And if you're not comfortable, that's fine. Don't fill in the gap. Yeah. Leave it open. But do not cross tracks. I think the one that I went on that they said pull right ahead, they said pull right ahead after the other rider waves you by. Yeah. That way they're acknowledging. Well, they know that you're coming. I know you're there. Come on up. I'm yeah. not going to cross over. Which I think is the safest plan because that's kind of a, it's kind of like that two key to the nuclear bomb method. Both parties have to be aware before anything is yeah, yeah. is done. All right. So, without beating safety like a dead horse, if you, you want more on safety, you can uh, visit Dan Dan the Fireman. There you uh, go. MC Rider. I think he's got better safety I've, videos. I've never seen a single one of his videos. He's an actual riding instructor in Dallas. So is Dan Dan now. Eh, well. MC Rider's been doing it for like 20 years or <laughs> yeah. some shit like that. I'm just fucking, I'm just uh, fucking around. Dan, um, I don't fucking like Dan Dan. <laughs> well, there you go. Fuck you, Dan Dan. <laughs> we'll see if we'll see if he actually listens. <laughs> yeah. If, you li- if you're listening, Dan Dan, fuck you. <laughs> Send me an email. <laughs> Uncle Ken at between two wheels dot com. <laughs> two is spelled out T-W-O. Uh, <laughs> um, one last thing I want to talk on safety, and this is speed. Oh, man. I know. It's, it's been hard. my hardest thing to do as a rider. What's um, that? Go fast or not or go fast? Not go fast. Uh, see, it's all relative. S- well, so like when I'm leading a ride, I, I try to keep it 10 miles over or less on the majority of Some of them I will hot dog, especially if we're in single file. And we're just, and that's what we're all out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. If we all know we're hot dogging it, yeah, 100, 110, whatever. Allegedly. Yeah. There's no proof of that. Well, <laughs> well okay, on a couple of my videos. <laughs> um, but know the people in your group. If you start seeing rubber banding happening or an accordion going on, get close to the speed limit and just, if you have cruise control, set cruise. And just maintain a good speed that everyone else can maintain. And understand if you're on a touring bike and you have a cruise control and you're up at the front and you hit cruise, not everyone else is going to be able to match your speed. So You can get damn close, but... (laughs) All right, so we're going to take a break here from Brush Hero. And when we come back, we're going to go into the closing argument. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, 
your rims, and anywhere else road gripe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. And we are back. Now, for this episode's closing argument, we thought long and hard about it. Actually, no, we literally just <laughs> came up with it during the break. <laughs> bullshit, but, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> um, in y'all's opinion, and this is going to set the internet on fire, I think. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> but in y'all's opinion, is it safe to ride in a group or not? Oh, that is a good one. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is a good one. Because yeah. when, when you booped me, everyone's like, oh, oh man, group it was rides Oh, goddamn split. group rides and your fucking cell phones and cameras and yeah. your TV crew and <laughs> you didn't carry the fucking seven. <laughs> or, or that guy on Reddit, get off your fucking phone. I'm like, bro, what, my, what, my, what? my phone it's, is in the picture. It's, it's right here. <laughs> my, my hands, I can't touch my phone. <laughs> and then he tried to ride it out. Like he, uh, he stuck to his gun. I mean, hey, you know, props to him for that, you know. <laughs> Props for extending his stupidity. Uh, you know, yep. you know, if you're gonna fucking be stupid, stick to it. And he he was the captain of that ship, and he oh, he yeah. rode that bitch to the bottom. Yes, <laughs> he did until he had to block me. You know, <laughs> in, in the navy, they say if you're jacked up, stay jacked up. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. fair. Don't deviate from your course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I gotta say, uh, it it depends. Yeah, it depends on your group. Now there are group rides that we've been on that I wanted to fucking just murder people. I wanted to ride by you and fucking shoot out your rear tire at top speed. Just <laughs> tell us how you really feel, kid. Like, <laughs> well, you know, Ken is blunt force trauma. That's but, true. I mean, because they're they're doing dumb shit in the group, BFT. which could potentially fuck everyone else up. And mm-hmm. if I take them out, you're doing the group a favor. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, okay. I actually saw a, a, a car meet thing where a, a Dodge plowed a Dodge pickup plowed into a Mustang, and everyone's like, "He, he probably hey, that he probably doing God's helped. work exactly, <laughs> that, doing God's that work." That was here. just collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll kick this off. I think I it's, think Ken already kicked it off. I definitely kicked it yeah, off. Yeah, but Boop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you, kick you're it late in to a, the party here, bud. In a less BFT force, way. yeah. Um, I think it's actually safer to ride in a group, especially on the highway, because you're creating a lot of surface area. A lot of visual. Yeah. So if you're riding five bikes deep, ten bikes deep, every car that's around you is going to know that there are motorcycles in the vicinity. I'm not saying that they're going to actually give a shit. True. But they cannot play the I didn't see him well, card. You, yeah. Headlights. The noise, depending on your distance and, yeah. you know. What type of bike you're riding. I mean, obviously, on the highway, you don't hear them, you know. I, I, I disagree. Right I've, I've heard motorcycles before. I've seen them. I actually but hear. they're usually pretty close by the time you hear them, at least in my experience. They are, but that doesn't mean I didn't see them. True. But, like, if you're riding in the city, downtown San Antonio, you know, and there's five of us and we're all cruising together, that's quite loud. You can hear oh, them. Yeah, it's a lot louder yeah. than a single bike, yeah. for sure. It's the, the, the Doppler effect. Come on, let's use some science here. Mm. All right. Really, but really, it is okay, well, ladies. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I would say in a group, it's safer from other drivers' perspective. However, when it comes to other bikes, you don't know how everyone's going to react. The the three of us, well, even Brad, we ride together a lot. Well, okay, not necessarily Brad. <laughs> but I was going to say Hasso. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the three <laughs> the three of us in Hasso and Tracy, we all ride together a lot, but I still didn't expect to get rear ended. But it happens. Well, Shit, it wasn't my happens. fault. Well, we established that it was Donnie's fault. Yes, so. but he's again someone who used to ride with us a lot, and shit's going to happen. Yeah. I'm not going to say that, that could have happened to a 50 year veteran. Yeah. I'm not going to say that that is a group riding issue. I think that was a personal issue, but that was a worst case scenario issue yeah. as well. Just the scenario in the, the three way stop. And but you hitting me was the best case scenario. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, me hitting Donnie would have been the best case scenario. Well, he probably would have sued you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm going to disagree with the majority of the internet trolls that say it's not safe to ride in a group. 
I'm going to say that to your point, Ken, it depends on the group. Yeah, if you if you have a, a solid group of riders, yeah, who for one know how to ride. Yeah, that's that's the key. And and they've got basic group riding skills, stay mm-hmm. staggered, how to use your hand hand signals and so forth. Then yeah, you, you've got there's a lot more visual there for mm-hmm. other cars to see that group between like I said the headlights, the different colored bikes, your helmet, I mean just everything that goes with, you know, you're riding in a large group. Yeah. You know, and Harleys and cruisers in general are typically louder. The, to the point where cars can hear them. I've I've actually been passed by uh, sports bikes when they were at speed, and I did not hear them until they were right next to me. Yeah. And when they were right next to me, it was loud as fuck. It has to deal with the tone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I jam out in my truck. I listen to music, and I listen to it loud, but I can still hear cruisers before I hear sport bike generally. Yeah. Um. So yeah, for me, that's that's where my stance is. Justin, what about you? I'm gonna have to throw in a bunch of different factors because if it's a group ride with the OGs, I don't see any positives or negatives besides the on the interstate, multiple bikes are louder. Um, or like, for example, if we're hot dogging on the highway on, on the interstate, I know that you guys can either A, keep up, or B, we'll catch up at some point. I don't have to worry about you guys. I don't have to worry about reactions to my actions. I can, for example, like uh, when we were coming through New Braunfels and we came on that light and we slammed on the brakes, I skid through half of the intersection, but <laughs> I didn't hit anything. Yeah. Uh, so um, if I personally, outside of, of you guys, I feel safer riding alone. Okay. But that only has to do with the fact that I'm usually leading. So everyone else is reacting to what I'm doing, which is not only that, but I also have to worry about everyone else's safety. Like I'm not going to make a lane change when there's a car right in the middle of the group, or I have to slow or speed up the group if I see someone getting on the highway. So that can create safer or less safe depending on my actions. Uh, But personally, I feel safer riding alone just because I know I'm only having to worry about me. So I'm more focused on my riding. Mm -hmm. All of my attention should be devoted to me and me alone. And I'm able to to ride very defensively slash I'm I'm an aggressive defensive driver rider (laughs) when I'm, I'm by myself, as opposed to when I'm in a group or leading a group, I tend to ride more conservative, which coincidentally can get you into more sticky situations yeah yeah people forget that motorcycles have one aspect we'll we'll call it one aspect that 99.9 percent of the cars on the road don't have we can out accelerate yeah the majority of the cars on the road let's say 95 percent yeah yep and then the downside too is we can stop a hell of a lot faster than most cars. I disagree with that. I disagree with really? that. Yeah. I know when I slam on my brakes, I'm slowing down a lot faster than a truck, like a like a pickup truck. No. I would disagree on that. I would absolutely disagree with that. Just really? based... Okay, if you would have said that in 2000, probably. <laughs> Saying it in 2019, the cars have just so exceeded expectations and, and performance that their stopping power is just based off of physics alone. Yeah. Just based off of contact patch. I mean, is each, be each tire has, you. you know, roughly a four to six inch contact patch for yeah. passenger cars, just regular cars, Re- like a regular Toyota Corolla. Yeah. So it, mm. it comes down to mass in velocity. You're able to slow down a lower amount of mass. And when you look at a this comparison, is, this of is true. Brake, brake pads, and which rotors. cars are going to have bigger? Well, but you look at the the comparison between how much mass that they're trying to stop versus the mass that vehicles are trying to stop, and the fact that we have linked brakes, where the cars don't necessarily have linked brakes. They all have ABS, though. The, every car has ABS well, nowadays. Right, but that has nothing to do with... You're the, not locking you the front You don't need brake. linked brakes in a car. They're That's all, why it's they, not a thing. They are linked. I mean, you push one brake pedal and all four brakes 
work in unison. Right. To the same degree as a, as a motorcycle where you have a 90-10 split, except for on the Harley Touring bikes where it's 70-30. Or, I mean, yes, you are right, but that is why I would say 80% of cars have bigger brakes in the front than the rear. Yes. Bigger yeah, contact that's true. Batch. But, again, we can argue this all day. But you, you're still wrong. But if you, you look yeah, at you're still wrong, 60 though. to 0, bikes win. Disagree. Disagree. Well, we can look that up offline. Okay. And then we'll bring it up next episode when Every, you're wrong. Everybody uh, email Roadblock. Yep. That's info at between two wheels.com. The two is spelled out T W O. Any yep. study you can find. Yeah. Any study. Let them know he's wrong. Yep. There you go. All right. Well, Brad, thank you for uh, sitting here and doing nothing. <laughs> Maybe we'll give you yeah. a mic next time. Well, let's not push if, it too far. If this episode gets 4,000 downloads, we'll give Brad a mic. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Yeah.